Hey there, welcome to DIY Projects with Pete episode 11. Today I'm going to show you how to build an old world style coffee table out of concrete and then we'll color it with some acid stain. It's going to have a real neat trowel finish to it to add some texture and it will certainly be a conversational piece in any home. For tools, you'll need to pick up or borrow an orbital sander, a drill, circular saw or table saw, a small shovel, a hammer or rubber mallet, bolt cutters, concrete trowel and sandpaper. For supplies, you'll need to pick up some pre-mixed concrete, I use Quickcrete, some Portland cement, wire mesh, concrete acid stain, melamine or plywood, a tub to mix concrete, and drywall screws. And for your complete list of instructions, tools, and supplies, head over to DIYPete.com forward slash old world table. You'll also find information about how we built the wood base for the concrete top. And before we get started, I want to give a quick shout out to Chad at Quickcrete for providing all of the concrete acid stains for today's project. The first step is to make our mold for the concrete. And to do this, I use either plywood or melamine. And here you can see we're cutting the strips at two and one quarter inches wide that we'll use so that we can have a concrete top that's 1.5 inches in thickness. Here I'm attaching those two and one quarter inch strips to the base of the mold that I had previously cut using a table saw. When you do connect them, make sure that you drill pilot holes so that the wood does not split and then use drywall screws when you attach them. During this video, I'm actually creating two tabletops. So you'll see shots from each project, but I use the exact same process in constructing each mold. Then use a speed square to ensure all of your side walls are perfectly square and lined up. Next, cut the wire mesh reinforcement down to size using a bolt cutters. You want to make sure that it fits inside the mold and has about an inch to an inch and a half around the perimeter between the mesh and between the side walls so that it doesn't poke out the sides of your finished concrete piece. The next step is to mix up your concrete and I like to use a high strength 5000 PSI mix from Quickcrete. When mixing the concrete, I like to shoot for about a peanut butter consistency. So add a little bit of water at a time and then mix it around with either a mixing stick or a shovel. And if it's too dry, you can always add a little bit more water. If it's too wet, you can always add some more concrete. And for this project, I mix two bags at a time, but I wouldn't recommend mixing any more than two bags uh, just because it's hard to stir when you have that much concrete in the bucket. When you get the concrete to the right consistency, you can grab an ice cream bucket, fill it up with some of the concrete, and then start putting it into your mold. Make sure you're wearing rubber gloves for this process to protect your hands, and then spread the concrete throughout the mold. If the concrete's about the right consistency, you'll be able to ball it up like this without having any concrete drip from it. And that is going to help because if it's too wet, that concrete is a lot more likely to crack down the road. Continue filling the mold until it's about halfway full, and then we'll add the reinforcement. And this table is going to be built right side up with that trowel finish, which is going to give this table kind of an old world style look, and it will have some texture. And I was able to get away with using plywood for the side strips on this, and that's because I wanted it to have some added texture on the sides. But if you're needing a perfectly smooth tabletop, I'd recommend doing the reverse cast technique that I use in my other videos. For that technique, you'll want to build your mold completely out of melanine, and so you'll pour the concrete in, it's going to cure against that flat surface, and then when it's completely cured, you'll flip it over and you'll have a smooth surface without having to do any troweling. Once your mold is filled about halfway or a little bit less than halfway, you can add that square mesh and just push it into the concrete a little bit and then you can continue to add more concrete on top. Make sure that it's nice and flat so that you don't have any uh, shadowing or metal that pops out of the sides or the top. Next, we'll screed the concrete using a two by four. You'll just want to move it back and forth in a saw-like motion, and this is just going to help level off the top of the concrete. The screeding is going to remove the high spots in the concrete, and it's also going to expose the low spots. So when you're screeding, you're gonna generate a little bit of extra concrete. You can use that to fill in the low spots, and you can also mix up a little bit more concrete if needed. Continue screeding until everything is perfectly level. Now we'll vibrate the concrete to help remove some of the air bubbles. You can see here I'm just shaking the table and air bubbles are starting to rise to the top. Another couple methods that I unfortunately didn't get on film for this video are to hit the sidewalls with a rubber mallet or to run an orbital sander around and hit the sidewalls as well. If you want to see that, you can check out my other concrete table video. 
Then run a trowel to really smooth out the entire surface. And after that's done, we'll let it sit for a little bit. Oh, there's a bear outside the shop. That's pretty cool. The temperature and humidity are going to play a big role in how long it takes before you can start doing your hard trowel finish. And you'll probably do a few rounds if you want to continue to get it even smoother and smoother. I wanted a real textured look, so I used my steel trowel a bit earlier than I usually would, and I just kind of did some swiping motions to get those nice trowel marks that give that table the old world style look. Let the concrete cure for a couple days and then remove the side walls. Use about 120 grit sandpaper to soften the edges and make sure that when you're working near the corners you work from the corner out if you work into the corner, you risk bumping off the edge. In addition to the edges, I also did use about 120 to 220 grit sandpaper on the top surface, and this was just to remove any real rough areas, but uh, still leaving in all the unique trowel marks. Then I put a couple towels down as padding so that I could flip the concrete piece up on its side and so that we could remove that plywood or melanine from underneath, allowing the concrete to dry evenly. And you'll want to use some sandpaper to get any of the edges that you haven't sanded yet. Next, we filled in all of the bug holes by creating a slurry mixture that consisted of Portland cement and either water or a fortifier or concrete bonder. I just mixed it up to about a putty consistency and then wiped it on using my hands. Make sure you're wearing gloves for this process as well. Let that slurry mixture dry onto the concrete for at least a couple hours and then use an orbital sander to remove some of the excess slurry. I do like to leave a little bit of it on because the stain takes to it kind of neatly and gives it an antique look. Now we get to move on to the concrete acid staining process. And the first thing I like to do is pour some water onto the concrete surface. This allows the acid stain to disperse a little bit more evenly and in some kind of cool patterns. The acid stain I use for this project is called Concrete Etching Stain. And I wanna thank Chad over at QuickCrete for sending up all these samples. For this project, we ended up using the coffee and English red colors. We poured the stain into two different spray bottles and then began applying it in random patterns. Now I'd recommend putting a tarp under your piece of concrete because as I found out, your grass will turn a little brown for the next couple weeks if you don't. The concrete acid stain is going to react with the limestones in the concrete, giving you all sorts of variations in color and it's going to look really neat and will just continue to darken up um, throughout the process as you're applying it. You can mix and match the different colors, and if you spray a little bit more in certain areas, you can highlight it and give it a cool effect. The acid stain continued to darken up the concrete, and in about 20 minutes, it got to this really nice color. Allow the acid stain to penetrate and then dry into the concrete for approximately eight hours. As soon as that's done, you can neutralize the reaction using some water and baking soda. Use a rag or a mop to remove some of the residue that was left from the acid staining process and then go ahead and rinse again. Let the concrete dry thoroughly and then apply a couple thin coats of concrete sealer. Let the sealer dry for a few hours and then attach it to your new base. 
All right. Thanks so much for tuning in to DIY Projects with Pete, episode 11. For complete show notes and instructions on today's project, just head over to DIYPete.com forward slash old world table. You'll also find links to how I built the table base and to the video that I made for another concrete project. Please friend us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash DIY projects with Pete and subscribe if you enjoyed this video, like and comment below. Thanks so much for watching. Cheers from Bozeman, Montana.